Amazing feeling, must be Mark Webber winning that Grand Prix. It is the last race, yeah, it is a good feeling, mate. Absolutely awesome. Uh, I think the national anthem is the most uh, special thing, I think, standing on the podium, uh, sharing it with the guys. Obviously, a huge amount of work that goes in, so... Uh, you, should, you should now be doing it under the British national anthem. Now, you lived here for so long. Yeah, well, actually, I got asked that question the other day. A guy said, you know, should we change the Australian flag because it's got the Union Jack on it? You know, I said, oh, I'm more than happy with the Union Jack and the Aussie flag there. It yeah, looks... perfect uh, combination yeah, for you. Yeah, exactly, so... Uh, I've been lucky, you know, the, U the, the UK's worked well for me and I've had a lot of, uh, you know, great support from here. Right, you were testing yesterday. Everybody wants to know, how did it go? It went well, actually, yeah. We've had a, a pretty good week down in Spain. We always test in, in Spain because obviously the weather uh, is pretty nice and uh, all the teams go down there and get into it. So new car, new concept. Uh, it's early days, uh, but so, so, what's, so what's, far so good. What's different then, new car? What, something different on the nose, isn't there, this year? Yeah, the nose has a new regulation. They've got to step that down, which uh, doesn't look particularly pretty, but that's just the way sometimes the engineers have to work their way around that. Uh, and lots of small changes. It's like mobile phones. When people say, you know, well, you know, you can't see where it's going to be in three or four years, but that's it. most like the Formula One, constantly tweaking it, making it better, making it lighter, so we can drive them quicker. What, what are the things that are actually changing? Are you allowed to say, or is it all top yeah, secret? Yeah, no, we can say. I mean, the... the, the we had last year, I think, called a blown diffuser, which was actually the exhaust uh, gases would go through the floor of the car and cause a lot of downforce on the car, which is great for lap time and gives us a lot of confidence and grip in the car. That's been banned, so the exhaust outlets have to be very high, which sounds extremely basic, and lose glazing over. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... Uh, it's her speciality, Mark. Oh, no, but, but it's... Yeah... It's, uh, that's changed. So that's a big, uh, that's a big effect on the performance of the cars. Will you ride or drive rather than not ride this car? <laughs> oh, this could be dangerous. That's right. um, in your next race, yes, is this uh, the new one? Yeah, it is. Brand new. Uh, it'll change subtly uh, by the time we get to the first race in Melbourne in, in about a month's time. But, uh, yeah, this is, you know, 85% of the car will definitely go to Melbourne. How frustrating is it when you turn up for a race and the oppo end up with better cars? Yeah, it's that's part of Formula One, mate, isn't it? I mean, we we we've been on a good roll of the recent uh, in recent years. Red Bull have done a great job, but we have you know Ferrari, McLaren, you know, phenomenal teams. Mercedes, you never know what sort of car they can do. So it's been like that since the 1950s and 60s. It's about technology and man together, you know, and the teams putting the best package together to try and win the Grand Prix. My my, stu my stupid question for you is is what makes what makes the difference though? If you've got two equal cars, is it is it later braking? better lines or, or earlier accelerating? What, what is the thing? Like most sports, mate, and you know this, obviously, you know, following football or, you know, whatever it is, boxing or any sports where, you know, the, the subtle technicalities of uh, any sports make the difference. So in football, obviously, it's the touch, you know, difference between a player that obviously has got, you know, just that subtle touch and same with us. So technically, we all do a pretty sound job, but if someone's got, you know, that element, sniff more confidence, understanding what the car needs, those things you mentioned, breaking a bit deeper, uh, you know, getting off the corner, you know, it's all those type of things which come down to two tenths of a lap, uh, you know, which is not much, but in our world it's quite a lot. And if you can do that for an hour and a half, then you're going to be 15 seconds down the road. What kind of personal training do you have to do? Because obviously, like you're saying, in all sport, you know, football, they, they train all year round. I mean, is there physical training, mental training? Yeah, both three. Really. I mean, physically, we have to be in, in pretty good shape. I'm one of the taller drivers, so I need to be, you know, pretty lean. Weight is important. Is so, that so uh, the car goes faster, yes, the lighter the, you are? Yes, the lighter I can be, the more ballast we can put where we want in the car. So that's that's an advantage if you can do that. Uh, so we, we race for two hours, so the heart rate's up for a long time, so we need yeah. to make sure the body's used to that. We can lose up to two kilos in the Grand Prix in terms of... Uh, you know, fluid loss, so um, sweating a lot. Uh, so two kilos. Yeah. So we'll have, I think we're having a dessert today. Are we having a dessert today? So I need to make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah, get so, some uh, calories on. We're making yeah, it so, calories. Yeah, yeah, it's it's eleven months of the year too. So similar to you know most most professional uh, sportsmen and women, you need to be in good nick for the whole year and travel healthily as well. You need to make sure yeah. that you the travel is a big part of our. Because there's so job. much travelling, isn't yeah. there? I How mean, many it's flights? Constant. We had a we had a tweet yeah. earlier. How many flights do you think you do? Oh, it'll probably average out, you know, you're definitely on a plane once a week for sure, if not twice a week. So uh, it's the long haul that really, you know, can mess your hair up. So uh, you need to uh, make sure you're well prepared for the long haul flights. And yeah. Formula One's a bit weird, as in your teammate is your rival. Yeah. So it's kind of a strange thing. And, and, you know, I don't know what goes on in the teams, but you always hear it, you know, you versus Vettel and Jensen versus Lewis and stuff. They all hate each other. We don't know what happens. But is there real rivalry in the team or what happens there? There is, and I think the... The 
the comparison can be, I suppose, made for you know goalkeepers, uh, wicket keepers, where there's only sort of there's two roles in our team, two 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 main drivers, but you want to you know do a better job than him when you can, and uh, that's a natural competitive instinct, and it's been like that. You know, it's famous in Formula One. You know, we've had some pretty special teammate battles over the year where it does end in tears. The team can't really control the two individuals because the egos are pretty tidy as yeah. well, so it gets tough to handle. So uh, it's. We work together. It is a bizarre relationship that we do work together because it's in our interest to work together. We want the car to be quick. And then it comes to race day, we want to make sure that we're far enough down the road. But then it's like, hey, we've got to sort each other out now. So that's what it's like. And how do you get on with the other drivers and the other teams? Are you all allowed to socialise together? Pretty well. Um, obviously, <laughs> culturally, there's a lot of different nationalities too, mate. You know, you yeah. can get on pretty well with the Brazilian guys and, you know, some of the, you know, Fernando's, you know, pretty good. So obviously with Jensen, I get on well with him. Um, but, you know... Germans are different, you know. I think you don't. The recent uh, um, Senna documentary really helped a lot of people that maybe don't know a lot about Formula mm, One. Amazing, yeah. I think it, it kind of brought a whole new audience yeah. into Formula One. Was he a huge influence to you growing up? Absolutely. I think uh, what he stood for. Uh, I think that uh, you know he virtually changed Brazil in many ways. They hadn't had the fo football success that they had, sort of, uh, you know, in the subsequent years after that. So he. He was an incredibly powerful man uh, on and off the track and uh, obviously, you know, when we lost him, it was just, you know, we just couldn't, how the hell, you know, can, can we lose him? And it was a tragic weekend in, in Imola. So uh, I was really happy with how the movie came across because, like yeah. you say, it gave people who maybe didn't really understand yeah, our sport, it gave them a snapshot of actually what it's like and obviously the politics, uh, yep. the driver's briefings that can kick off a bit. Uh, and, you know, Prost was a bit of a villain in it, but they needed to do that to, to a degree. But, you know, Senna was... Uh, you know, taken from us, you know, no question about it, way too early. I think it but, showed the risks as well, yeah. didn't it? Well, yeah, it? that's what I was to say. The sport's moved on, on so much. It's been, you, you know, as a, as a viewer, you start thinking, oh, it's, it's really safe. And then Dan Weldon last year mm. proves that when you're in a car, you're driving at those speeds, it's dangerous still. I mean... Yes, they have improved the safety uh, a huge amount, which is, which is great. Uh, we still love the, the, the risky side of it, but we don't want to be taking undue risks just for the sake of it. Jackie Stewart has to be thanked for, 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 for lots of reasons. In the 70s, they were losing guys a lot. Uh, yeah. And they improved the medical facilities. They improved the, the fuel tanks so the cars weren't exploding when the cars hit the wall. Uh, you know, so lots of things have moved on. I've had some decent crashes uh, and it's, it's good to be able to you know, walk away from those and still be able to, to compete. Uh, no, but you don't want to, you know, clearly make a habit of it because uh, mainly the technology the, the, the technology's moved on, the carbon fibre, construction, all that sort of stuff, which has uh, made it much, much safer. Does it, when you crash, is it all going to slow motion for you? Absolutely. Yeah, it's all slow motion. I've had a few where, yeah, you've got time to brace yourself before you go in, which is, you know, you know it's not ideal, but you're just not quite sure how it's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and when you come away from the wall and everything's still, the lights are still on, it's good. Well, um, you are fit, as we, as we were just saying, and you've also got a challenge that you do, which is the um, the uh, Mark Webber challenge, which is down in Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, why don't you? Yeah, quickly explain mm. what it's about, and then we'll show a bit of film. Yeah, well, I set it up in 2003. I just thought uh, to have an opportunity for people to test themselves outside their comfort zone. Uh, it's it's all related back to charity. So I've uh, done a lot of stuff with Leukemia Foundation in Australia, so uh, helping youngsters that are uh, having a tough time. Uh, they pay money to enter the race and it's five days. It's mountain biking, kayaking, running uh, in pristine uh, locations in Tasmania. It's a phenomenal part of the world and uh, it's, it's going well. So we did it last year, as I say, and, um, yeah, it, it works uh, it works really well. People love it. They, uh, they, they get to... You quite fancy that, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Have we got time to show a little clip of this? Here we go. Have we got... It's absolutely amazing. Ah. I've no idea how you train for that. Run out of time. I've just got to ask you the, the, the tweet from Pam. What happens if you sneeze during a race? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've used. Yeah, about. <laughs> never never sneeze in a race. I think the instincts uh, and the concentration so high, the adrenaline's absolutely off the charts. So I uh, haven't had the urge to sneeze. Can't change so, your 
thing halfway through. No right? balaclava, mate. It's all uh, we're all well, then, uh, locked in there. You just have to have to you, go you, with you it, was, wouldn't you? You were saying before you're absolutely focused, senses go, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, probably. It? I mean, you you might toilet full bladder. That that might come every now and again, but you that again, that's quickly gone. You're so you're so focused on that. Uh, and on is your the next race Australia? Yeah, first so race home. of the year. Is home that an race, important so. one to win? Love to. Yeah. Love to win the home race. It's always uh, a special one for the drivers. Absolutely. All right, listen, Mark is staying with us all morning, so uh, and he's doing a bit of cooking for us, so uh, make wow. sure you get your questions in for um, Mark uh, or Mark Dolan. Uh, tweet us at SFTW or email them via our website, bbc.co.uk, slash something for the weekend, especially if you've got one of those questions about Formula One that we haven't asked. That's really important.